resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Brandon Souris. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> After nine years of Justin Trudeau, oh. Canadians. Oh. Uh, I'll make sure that I uh, change that, Madam Speaker. After nine years of this Prime Minister, Canadians are being forced to cancel their summer vacations at the Liberals' tax and spend agenda. Has even a simple road trip unaffordable? Has made it unaffordable. Parents are barely, uh, can barely afford basic necessities, much less a summer vacation. The Prime Minister may be able to jet set off on a 230,000 luxury vacation, but most Canadians are having to scale back and cancel their summer plans after the Liberal carbon tax made gas and groceries unaffordable. Like all MPs in this House, I'm getting emails and calls from mums and dads who are struggling to pay their bills and to put food on the table. I'm hearing from seniors who worked decades to save their, for their retirement, only to see inflation eradicate their income and their financial security. And as someone who represents a large rural constituency, I know how the carbon tax disproportionately impacts the people who call Westman home. At a time when life is costing far more for my constituents, the Prime Minister's recent budget does nothing to bring the relief families desperately need. As the cost of groceries, gas and home heating continue to increase, this new Democrat uh, Liberal government has failed to listen to Canadians. And Mr. Madam Speaker, when I'm done, I'll be certainly, uh, I will certainly be glad to be splitting my time with uh, my honourable colleague from, if he can just... <laughs> Stormont Dundas. Stormont Dundas. Klinger. Klinger, yeah. Sorry uh, to my colleague, for, uh, because uh, he's one of my better friends in this House, and I, I still don't know everybody's constituencies after all these years. But, Madam Speaker, my... Folks back home have voted down numerous calls on our, of our uh, Conservative team to scrap their, their carbon tax, like the Liberals here have. Um, instead, they increased it even more, despite the financial hurt Canadians are feeling. The reality is that more and more families are struggling to afford basic necessities, and when you're finding yourself in financial troubles like today's people are, even simple pleasures end up falling by the wayside. For many, a summer vacation isn't a big, dramatic, expensive getaway. It could be a long weekend at the cottage, a week-long road trip, or simply a few days camping. It's a treasured opportunity to get away from business as usual, unplug, and recharge with loved ones. Our kids need time with their parents and grandparents, the chance to experience the outdoors, and appreciate the beauty of our great country here in Canada. Unfortunately, thanks to the NDP Liberal Coalition, this Prime Minister was able to hike his carbon tax by 23% on April 1st, further driving up the cost of everything. In fact, uh, but the fact is that 70% of Canadians oppose this tax hike, and 70% of the provincial premiers have asked the Prime Minister to stop this painful tax increase. And for good reason. Canada's food price report predicted an additional $700 annual increase in food expenditures for the average family this year over 2023. The most significant increases range from 5 to 7 percent in the categories of bakery meat and vegetables. Last year, food banks had to handle a record 2 million visits in a single month, with a million more visits expected in 2024. Homeless encampments are now common in every city across Canada, and their number in, uh, continues to increase. The decline in the Canadian economy since 2019 created by this Liberal Prime Minister means Canadians are now poorer by $4,200 per person. While American GDP per capita has grown by 7% since 2019, Canada's has fallen by 2.8%. This is the single largest underperformance of the Canadian economy in comparison to our United States neighbours since 1965. We've already seen the real-world impact of this in our own backyard. In Brandon, the Samaritan House Food Bank gave out nearly 36,000 hampers last year, a dramatic increase of 12,000, as I've said a few times in the chamber here, Madam Speaker, which was 50% above their normal annual average. 
This is in line with trends across the country, though, as fam families struggle to make ends meet and put food on the table. And we recently found out that more than 50,000 Manitobans are now regularly using a food bank. That's the highest number ever recorded. And while we get bogged down in statistics, we must never forget that we're talking about people, our relatives, our neighbours, our friends. Food banks are being used by full-time workers more and more. In some communities, one in six visitors say they are employed, which is an 82 per cent increase over 2016, and this number continues to grow. More than 60 per cent of visitors were first-time food bank users. It's heartbreaking. These are hundreds and thousands of Canadians who have been forced to stay in lines in food banks only because the NDP Liberal Coalition is determined to make life equally miserable for all Canadians. Let's be clear, the rising cost of food and other necessities cannot be divorced from this NDP Liberal government's tax and spend policies. Their carbon tax alone is driving up the cost of everything. It is contributing to the costs of growing our food and other expenses all along the entire food supply system. It gets passed down until everyday Canadians get stuck with the bill. Despite numerous claims by this Prime Minister and his radical environment minister, the independent parliamentary budget officer confirmed that families are seeing a net loss under this ideological policy. People pay more in the carbon tax than they receive in rebate. We Conservatives have been pointing this out for years. Nothing is more insulting to the millions of Canadians trying to heat their homes in the winter than when the Prime Minister decided to temporarily pause his carbon tax on only 3 per cent of the households. It's no wonder the provincial governments are up in arms. The most recent example of how to out of touch and stubborn this Prime Minister can be is his position on Bill C-234. This Conservative bill aims to remove the carbon tax for farmers, thereby lowering food costs that are passed on to consumers. Instead of using an opportunity to lower food prices by passing this bill, or at least by letting it pass with no political interference, he did everything possible in the House of Commons and the Senate to delay change and undermine it. Moreover, the Liberals and their NDP coalition partners decided to hike the tax, carbon tax by 23 per cent in April. This was just one step in their plan to quadruple the carbon tax over the next six years, making everything more expensive at the worst possible time. At the same time, their inflationary spending and ever-increasing taxes are already taking their toll, and paychecks aren't going as far as they once did. While the NDP leader is trying to save what is left from his political legacy, he must, we must not forget that every NDP member voted 23 times to keep the Prime Minister's carbon tax in place. But I won't stop calling on them to do the right thing and support our Conservative motion this time. This year, the Prime Minister's carbon tax will cost Manitobans an extra $1,750. This summer alone, it will take more than $600 from family budgets. All of these costs add up, and even the most basic summer vacation plan suddenly becomes out of reach for people. Constituents of Brandon Suris are disproportionately affected by the carbon tax. The Liberal government needs to start realizing that its policies affect rural and urban Canadians quite differently. The riding covers more than 17,000 square kilometres. The figure may be hard to picture for the finance minister, but who lives in downtown Toronto, the ninth smallest riding in Canada. But that is roughly the same size, Brandon Service, that is, as three Prince Edward Islands put together. We know the Liberal carbon tax is playing a role in raising the price of everything, so we're fighting the axe, fighting to tax, axe the tax to bring relief to Canadians. Madam Speaker, Let's save $603 this summer for Canadians. They need it. People know better how and where to spend their own money, and the Prime Minister must recognize this fact. A pause to the carbon tax, a pause to the federal gas tax, a pause to the GST on gasoline and diesel for the summer. We must do it now. If we want to help young people, families and seniors deal with the rising cost of living, I implore all my colleagues to vote in favour of our Conservative motion. A future Conservative government will axe the tax on everything for everyone in a carbon tax election. 
But until that can happen, the Prime Minister must adopt this common sense measure to give Canadians a break this summer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and Resuming debate, the Honourable Member Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Madam Speaker, I want to take an opportunity to get on the record here in Ottawa in support of our Conservative Opposition Day motion, a common sense motion, to help provide some immediate relief to those who are suffering from the cost of living crisis in every part of this country. What we are proposing is immediate fuel tax relief, both on the price of gas and diesel from Victoria Day all the way to Labour Day. That is going to take the tax off multiple fronts when it comes to gas and diesel. Not just the carbon tax, which is going to quadruple in itself, but suspending that for the summer, but also the federal fuel tax as well. And if it doesn't frustrate Canadians enough, remember that they tax the tax when they put GST and HST on the carbon tax as well. We are going to save 35 cents a litre for Canadians this summer if our motion is able to pass. That means that Canadians and families could maybe afford that summer road trip that's not possible now because they can't make ends meet. That maybe helps somebody that is going to medical appointments from my part of eastern Ontario into Ottawa or to Toronto on a regular basis. Somebody in northern Ontario in Timmins that has to drive three and a half hours down to Sudbury to get routine medical appointments. They can deserve to have the fact that 35 cents a litre can be kept in their pocket this morning, or this, this summer rather. Madam Speaker, I want to spend a bit of time not just talking about the break that Conservatives would provide on the price of gasoline, but also on the price of diesel. As many would know, I was proud to be born and raised around Jet Express, a trucking company in eastern Ontario that my parents ran for many years. And I want Canadians just to remember and know, frankly, about the trucking industry and how billing works. If we were to take the federal taxes off the price of diesel for the few months we're talking about this summer, that would have an immediate and measurable impact on the cost of transportation in this country. You see, the overwhelming majority of trucking companies, when they charge a rate, they have a base rate and fee, but there's this flexible and rotating fuel surcharge that is put on. The higher gas and diesel prices or diesel prices go, the more a trucking company has to charge in fuel surcharge, adding to the cost of delivering something. For an example, from the soup and salad bowl of, Cent uh, of Simcoe County, all the way up to northern Ontario, all the way out to the east coast or west coast. A reefer truck would see if the federal taxes were taken off, that price would drop significantly with the savings on the diesel federal taxes being removed. The fuel surcharge can go down, providing immediate relief on the cost of goods and shipping around this country. Madam Speaker, it's common sense. Conservatives will keep advocating for it, despite the opposition from the other parties. Committed, set out.